The current guidelines on PSA testing in Australia and overseas advise shared decision-making between the doctor and the patient. This video is an example of shared decision-making for PSA testing in a man with no symptoms. Potential benefits and harms of PSA testing need to be discussed to allow informed consent or informed refusal to proceed. Gary has come in as a new patient as his close friend recently had surgery for prostate cancer and he wants to talk about testing. Gary is a 69 year old man with no family history of prostate cancer and who is otherwise healthy and fit. There are no medical concerns that need attention. Hi, I'm just here to get the form for the prostate cancer test. Okay, but before I go ahead with that, I'd just like to tell you a little bit about prostate cancer and how we test for it. Prostate cancer is the second highest cause of cancer death in Australian men. The risk of getting prostate cancer goes up as you get older, if you have a family history, and once you're 75, the risk of getting prostate cancer is about one in seven. So testing for prostate cancer can mean an aggressive cancer can be detected in the early stages and cured. And this can really reduce your chance of dying from prostate cancer. Great, that's why I want to get tested. Okay, but the other side of the story is sometimes a harmless cancer might be picked up by the testing and that can cause some harm. Why could that cause harm? Well, prostate cancer is a little bit different to a lot of other cancers. It is usually very slow growing, so it's unlikely to cause any problems until at least seven years after diagnosis. So there's no point testing the very old or the very unwell men who are unlikely to live longer than seven years because we wouldn't actually do anything but about a positive result. And there are generally three groups of prostate cancer. There's the low grade ones that are unlikely to ever cause any harm. There's the aggressive high grade ones that can cause spread and can cause significant problems and death. And there's the intermediate ones that are a bit unpredictable and may be harmless or aggressive and so are generally treated. So testing might pick up an aggressive cancer, but it might also pick up a harmless cancer. Doesn't the test tell you if you have cancer and how bad it might be? No, we start with the PSA test. What's PSA? PSA, it stands for prostate specific antigen. It's a protein that's made in the prostate. If it's elevated in your bloodstream, it can mean that something's going on in the prostate. There might be a benign enlargement, there could be some infection in the prostate, or there might be cancer in the prostate. So the PSA doesn't really diagnose the cancer. That's right. So if your PSA is elevated, then it means we have to do some more tests to sort out what's going on in the prostate. So if your PSA was high, then I would repeat the test in two or three months time. If it was still high, then I'd refer you to a urologist. Uh, the urologist would do a digital rectal examination to feel the prostate and would likely arrange for you to have an MRI and, and a biopsy of the prostate. So would the biopsy tell me whether I had cancer? Yes, the biopsy is the main test to determine if there is prostate cancer and how aggressive the cancer might be. Samples of the prostate are taken via needles um, which are inserted into the prostate via the rectum or through the skin between the scrotum and the anus. Ouch, that sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah, well, y you would be sedated via light anaesthetic, but yes, afterwards you may feel a bit sore and you may have some blood in your urine, sperm or bowels. And rarely you can get a serious infection from the biopsy, which can land you back in hospital. So if I had an elevated PSA, and a biopsy, and the biopsy showed there was cancer, I guess that would mean that I'd have to have my prostate removed. Well, yes and no. In the old days, most cancers were treated and had the cancer removed or irradiated. But now it depends on what grade of cancer is detected. So if the biopsy shows you've got a low grade cancer, then you'd be closely monitored by the prostate cancer specialist uh, because recent evidence shows that many low-grade cancers will never cause harm and so treatment might be avoided. But if the biopsy shows an intermediate or high-grade cancer, then treatment with surgery to remove the prostate or radiation to kill off the prostate and the cancer would occur. Are there any side effects to those treatments? Yes, there are. There can be problem with bladder control. Most men recover, but some can have persistent bladder problems. Most men experience some difficulty with getting erections after treatment and this may or may not fully recover. 
some patients may have problems with diarrhea after radiation. And also some men report anxiety living with a diagnosis of prostate cancer. Then there are also the rare standard operative and anesthetic complications. So testing for prostate cancer can treat an aggressive cancer while it's curable, but there can be harms from side effects of treatment or diagnosis of a harmless cancer. I can give you a pathology form now and you can go ahead with a test or you can think it over a little bit if you'd like. It's completely up to you. No, look, I'm, I'm happy to have the test. I already knew a little bit about this from talking to my mate, but it's just a little bit more involved than I had originally thought. If having the test is the way to go, then that's the way to go. Okay, well, I'll give you the referral form to have the blood test and do try and avoid sex or vigorous exercise for 48 hours before the blood test if you can, because that can affect the test. Then if you could please give us a call about three or four days after you've had it. Um, if it's elevated, I'll need to see you again to sort out the next step. Are there any other questions? No, no, that's great. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Well, that was pretty straightforward. Gary was at average risk with no symptoms and no family history and good life expectancy. He was keen to be tested for prostate cancer but needed more information. The 2016 NHMRC guidelines for PSA testing for prostate cancer are available on Health Pathways, the PCFA website and the Cancer Council Australia guidelines wiki site. The guidelines apply to men with no symptoms. A family history of prostate, breast and ovarian cancer is important in determining the risk profile of each man and impacts the recommendations. Take home decisional aids or leaflets can be helpful. The guidelines have moved away from the GP deciding whether or not to offer PSA testing to the GP providing evidence-based information as part of a discussion about both the benefits and harms of PSA testing with the patient. The man can then provide informed consent or informed refusal. It is not appropriate to order PSA tests as part of a battery of tests without the man knowing. Health Pathways summarises information as well as guides what to do in the case of an abnormal result. Finally, shared decision making takes time. The patient might need to come back for another appointment to discuss everything.